Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. You got Luke. Luke, today we're continuing our series on great inventors, this time looking at Charles Goodyear. Chuck. Is, Chuck. Well, because yeah. he's a longtime listener, close close friend of the show. Yeah, yeah. And did you say good inventors or famous inventors? Great inventors. I don't know if this, I mean, he invented I, a great thing. He but did. I don't know if I would consider him in particular. I think we'll get to that. We'll get a to that. Great inventor. And I I will claim him a great inventor and I have my reasons later on. All righty. All right. Born just up the road from us in New Haven, Connecticut. Relatively speaking, just Relatively. up the road, right? Yeah. Uh, way back in December 29th of 1800. 1800? Yeah, 1800. That's a long time ago. That's a really long time He's ago. He's one of those people that like doesn't get a birthday because it's right next door to Christmas. Oh. My my brother-in-law is that way, and we have to like have a special cake and stuff for him because otherwise he just gets forgotten. That's the worst because you that get like, really nothing is. to look forward to for the rest of the year. Yeah. How about this fun fact about Shoot. Chuck? He started the first retail domestic hardware store in the United States with his father, who was the inventor and businessman. Amasa Goodyear, and they started it in Philadelphia. So, so something I thought was interesting was he he, he went to Philadelphia. I, I read to study like hardware retail. I, I he didn't go to a college. I'm guessing he worked for maybe a I hardware store. I think he went store? to school eventually in back in uh, Connecticut somewhere. But yeah, they started a hardware store. Yeah, I, like I, the I, first I, one. I just don't get how you like study that. It's just like people need nails and wrenches and caulking guns maybe and... back then people didn't know how to use a hammer i, I don't know it's just it, it seems like people need stuff let's put it all in one store and call it a hardware store if my wife went to a hardware store she would need educated on all of the tools my big thing is i buy stuff and then i ruin it or, oh, I, yeah. or I leave paint on it and and then i can't use it again and i gotta go i literally have probably purchased a hundred paint rollers, hundreds of scrapers, and I use them like one time and I ruin them. My problem is I'm not good at putting my toys away. Oh. So it's like I'll like do something and then I'll leave it outside and the next thing you know I pick it up two weeks later and it's all rusted. <laughs> so that doesn't go well. All right. Okay. Back, back to Chuck. Back to Chuck. In 1844, after establishing the Nagatuck India Rubber Company, he patented his vulcanization process which was patent number 3633 from the u.s patent office if anybody's counting did you have anything you wanted to talk about before like in between the hardware and the vulcanization oh there was a whole bunch of stuff all right between the Let's hardware and the vulcanization i, I so. figured you had some of that the yeah dingy so, details yeah so so he he was he was caught up in this thing what they called the rubber fever rubber of, fever of, of the of the 1830s <laughs> i what, love that it's whatever that, that means and i think what it was is rubber was getting more popular for all these kind of different applications uh, it wasn't perfect for really any application. Like rubber, it, it would work well in you know certain climates if it wasn't too hot and it wasn't too cold. So there was all this kind of stuff going on, and, and apparently uh, he was like I don't know, super curious. I don't know why, and he was like in his mid thirties. So he was like thirty four years old, and he was all of a sudden super curious uh, about uh, rubber. So apparently the way the story goes, how he really got into like working with, yeah. with rubber was he went to jail for some <laughs> debt because apparently he was He's in a jail. total bum. He was in jail a boatload of times. But M not like because he was, you know, shooting people or something it was all because debt. he never paid his related. bills. Yeah, yeah, Almost all debt related. So this guy was kind of a deadbeat, unfortunately. Yeah. And he says to his wife, I forget what his wife's name was. He says, hey, you know what? Bring me some raw rubber in your rolling pin. Yeah. yeah. So while he's in jail, because he has all this time, he's messing around with his rolling pin. He's rolling the rubber. And, and he was just infatuated with rubber. I don't know why. And he figured, like, it, it always gets sticky when it gets warm and whenever you work it. And he's thinking, oh, well, maybe if I add talc or something to it, that would get rid of the stickiness. So that's where he got, like, I think it was manganese. Uh, or, 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 or some kind of talc-like powder that he added to it. It was common, something you can get at the drugstore, uh -huh. super easy. And it ended up having, like, super promising uh, results. And, and the, sulfur, too, right? Uh, sulfur was later. Oh, sulfur so, was so, later. So, My bad. So this is before sulfur. So, okay. so this is all the Oh, this was before stuff. it worked. This, <laughs> okay. this, this is all the failed yeah. stuff that he did. So, uh, so it, it, it's, it was a little bit better, but it still wasn't great. 
Uh, and he convinces his wife with the help of uh, a friend that gave him some money. He also was not the person you would ever want to be friends with because he was always asking for money. He's that guy. He's he, that He guy. has that next big deal that's going to yeah. get you rich. Oh, my yeah. goodness. So, He's basically you he, with your podcast. Exactly. Always bringing in the cash. So he convinces one of his boys from back in the day to give him some money, and he and his wife uh, start making shoe rubber in like soles for shoes in yeah. their kitchen right yeah which is weird they're making them in the kitchen they got them all laid out he's so convinced hold on but what before you go on shoot if we remember correctly we did an episode about nike or something something like oh, that and, they used the, and he used the waffle, the waffle press iron. in his uh kitchen to I, make the shoes i don't know if he used a waffle well iron i know but still similar similar type but again act. in the kitchen he's so convinced of these 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 shoes he takes a one month vacation with his family comes back and the shoes have all melted because he did this <laughs> at the beginning of summer it's just a big it's just a big pile of saggy shapeless shoes oh, and that's paste. so funny so um, so again, he, he's, he's just like doing terrible somehow after all of this happening and just failure after failure, uh, he somehow gets a contract to make 150 mail bags for the U S postal. Service. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, oh my goodness. And, this story's great when you know what's yeah, coming. So he Gosh. discovered some way where if he used, uh, I forget what the acid was nitric acid. So he accidentally, I think a lot of his inventions were accidental. It seemed that way. Uh, but if you put nitric acid on the exterior of rubber, like you, like, like you put the chemical on it, it does something to the chemical, and it makes it kind of shiny and, uh, yeah, a, nice a, and little, a little more durable. Yeah. So he's like, oh, this is great. I'll just make all these mailbags. Um, and so he gets a contract. He makes all these mailbags. Uses now, by mailbag, you mean what you carry the mail in, not yeah, like not like a, like a man worker. purse. Like a postal worker oh, mailbag. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Um and he's convinced this is going to be great. Oh, I got the vacations backwards. Okay. He took the vacation when he made these mailbags because he was so convinced. He comes back from the vacation. It's summertime. All the mailbags have gotten sticky and gummy and totally fell apart. Gross. So this cat has had like one failure literally uh, after another. Uh, and then do we want to talk about this? Do you want me to include up till when he discovered the sulfur? Let's take let's take a pause on that. Okay. And I want to give another little story of fun. Okay. Of okay. I don't want to claim it as failure, but come on, this guy just was not not batting a thousand. Is that what they say? I think the so. sports the I sport so. ball. So back in the 30s, like we've talked about this a little bit, rubber was kind of viewed as this miracle material. Super right? cheap too. Super cheap, gooey, and it came from Brazil. But for some reason, they still called it India rubber which doesn't make sense to me. But anyways, uh, this India rubber had the flaws of not being able to withstand heat or stand up to the cold. It would get brittle and break. Mm -hmm. So uh, it said, here's a story from like the mid-19th century. Chuck Adventure begins with a visit in 1834 to the Roxbury India Rubber Company in New York. A lot of this happened in that area, which yeah. is kind of weird. So inside this store... Goodyear spots like a rubber life vest that a company had made, and he thought that he could improve the valve on the vest. So when he returned to the store and presents this sweet new valve that he's created, uh, so I guess he was trying to do something, he's trying. right? Uh, the store manager said that he should have invented a better use for rubber instead of a better valve. So apparently there was a book written about all this, and it says he pointed, the manager points to a row of shells containing all sorts of like blobs of material, just like what that you're talking used to about be rubber. with the bags and the shoes <laughs> that used to be rubber. Yeah. And they were just all like stuck together. The room stunk and there was just all this wasted stuff that they couldn't take advantage of. And so, and at this point I kind of thought like, you know, Goodyear reminds me of our friend Tesla. So if you haven't checked out our Nikola Tesla episode, he does. Dude might be brilliant, really determined comes up with all these great things vulcanization is kind of a big deal yeah terrible at everything else yeah terrible with money terrible with family execution all yeah. kinds of stuff everything else really bad so goodyear puts his family in debt just like you're saying ends up in debtor's prison uh he moved a bunch of times to new york and massachusetts and philadelphia all over the place. and connecticut and so basically anywhere he could get money to run these experiments yeah. just like you said he's that friend you don't want knocking on yeah. your door cause, hey can i crash on your couch man and i got right. i got 17,000 pounds of rubber that I need to store in your backyard. Right. Yeah. So this is when he starts like 
doing all of these things that you're talking about, the shoes experiments, yep. and then he gets the sweet contract for 150 mailbags. But two not-so-fun facts for you. One, he ran out of money to pay for his experiments, so he bagged or sold his family's furnishings. Yeah. How terrible is that? Even his kids' textbooks he sold. This is how hard up he was. But then there's a quote from one of his biographies. He spared a set of china teacups, obviously because they mean something to the yeah. family, right? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Not because of that, but because they could double in the evening as mixing bowls for his rubber. Like, what a jerk. What, dirt ball. So not so fun fact number two. Goodyear thought that, oh, this is exactly the one, the, the mailbags. Thought he could make the mailbags. Turns out they melted all over the mail. Yeah. Stinks. Yes. Okay, sorry. So, not a fun fact, but we'll kind of wrap this up and go to okay. some shout outs here. But uh, really super terrible fact. So uh, he's in jail for a $5 hotel, oh uh, hotel bill that he Seriously? couldn't pay. Comes home, finds out his infant son has died. Ah. I mean, you feel That's terrible, terrible for the guy. He yeah. has no money, can't pay for the funeral. He literally has to haul the coffin to the graveyard by himself. Wow. And this is, he had 12 children. Six of them died in infancy. Oh, my goodness. I mean, that That's is really rough. That is just bananas. On that note, let's Oof. take a break for a word from our sponsor. Yeah. Obviously, the sponsor this week is Goodyear. Not. It is not Goodyear yeah, is what I meant to say. We can't say that oh, legally, I, I'm I pretty for, sure. I keep forgetting. Okay, but we do have a lot of shout-outs, nice. which is nice. All right, shout-out number one, Rod C. Like Rod Woodson, but different. Nice. Rod C. Uh, part of the Ferris State University Formula SAE team. So shout-out to them. Nice. Uh, would like an episode on SAE. That Which, would be a good one. Yeah, this is at least the second person that uh, has the, asked this for this. This is the formula stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. So uh, ask for some stickers to slap on the car. So hopefully we get a picture of the car Sweet. when we get those in the mail. So that was cool. Dustin R. suggested some episode ideas, uh, even one on reverse osmosis. And that's one of those things that I'm like, oh, maybe I'll learn that from reverse osmosis. And I don't even know what that means. You know when you like boil water and you let it condense or something like I, that? I don't know. I so. just did the episode. There's your episode, Dustin. Or maybe we could figure out what it actually is. Uh, CJK. So CJ would be the name and then K the oh, last gotcha. letter. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, freshman at SMU. Uh, I think they have some sort of horse. They do, and I looked it up. Okay. So their mascot is a Mustang, and her name, I assume, is Peruna. P-E-R-U-N-A. Okay. So go Mustangs. I'm not sure where you're going with this. Uh, anyway, I just was interested. <laughs> I know they had a horse on their football helmet go or something. Go Mustangs. Yeah. So anyway, CJ is going to serve in the Marine Corps after Sweet. work or after school. So thank you for that. Love all those that serve. Yeah. Also trains in, is it, is it, I don't know what it is. M-U-A-Y, Thai, my, my Thai? Muay Thai. Muay Thai. Not my Thai, like the thing I drink. <laughs> no, Muay Thai. Yeah. So. You're, you're so funny. <laughs> so CJ could beat us up. Uh, two more. Sydney N. from Kenya. Ooh. How about that? We're really a global this, podcast This is now. our first Kenyan shout-out, right? I think so, yeah. So we have some big reach. The favorite part of the show for Sydney is when we talk about our careers. The second favorite part is when Luke goes, pew, pew. Pew, pew. <laughs> That's for you. Sydney. I love that. Okay, and then one other shout out. JP wrote in, our good friend, that uh, yep. longtime listener of the show, actually, this time. He says, a quote, Luke, how the heck are you not a fan of Love Actually, the movie? Next thing you'll say is you're not a fan of The Princess oh, Bride. Oh, no, no, no. Princess Bride. That, 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 was my, that was my grow up movie. Yeah, I told him that I felt pretty confident that you're a fan of it and that we couldn't be friends if you were not. So there's yeah. that. You know, JP, Love Actually is a remote romantic comedy you know yeah. he's a true romantic with all oh, of his sure. gestures so i'm sure anyways if you would like a shout out if you'd like to epi uh, recommend some episodes anything like that email us at unprofessional engineering at gmail.com make sure you subscribe make sure you like make sure you share make sure you review all that stuff wherever you happen to listen make sure you do all those things all of that let's stuff. get back into oh it. back to chuck okay so, so Another happy accident <laughs> happens. So apparently, oh, this, this, this is the crazy one. So uh, his great discovery came in the winter of 1839. Uh, so he was using some sulfur for his experiments because that's just what you do. You just that's walk around. That's what I do. You just walk around using sulfur, right? And, and apparently, something happened. And the, the story, everywhere that I looked, it was always kind of a different story. And he's always been very vague on it as well. Okay. But apparently, uh, he had some sulfur. 
it f- was mixing with the the rubber. It accidentally somehow fell on. How does that happen? I don't no, you would think you'd be super careful with rubber and sulfur and a wood burner sitting there, but apparently it falls on the wood burner, and he's like, "Oh no!" And he goes over and scrapes. What was he his, like? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> he goes over, scrapes it off, and realizes, "Oh geez, this rubber's kind of you know changed you know properties a bit. It's a little more firm, and it's not as you know wiggly wobbly." And Ooh, that's the technical, the technical term. term. Yeah, like, yeah, the plasticity and the elasticity, no, no, wiggly and the viscosity, wobbly. wibbly wobbly. Um, <laughs> And apparently when this thing fell on this pot belly stove, you know, the chemical reaction that needed to happen and all the processes to basically vulcanize, and I'll let you take vulcanization, yeah. occurred. And he essentially, in his mind, had made this I, th- this waterproof, more durable rubber. So let's pause right there. What is vulcanization? Go. Vulcanization, off the top of my head, top your head, from my chemistry days, it's a chemical process in which rubber is heated with sulfur, accelerator, and activator at about 140 to 160 degrees C. So that feels like pretty hot degrees. Yeah, at. about 7,000 degrees yeah. Fahrenheit. <laughs> the process involves the formation of cross links between long rubber molecules so as to achieve improved elasticity resilience tensile strength viscosity and wibbly wobbly wibbly wobbly wibbly wobbly yes so that's vulcanization and just to uh give us another shameless shout out if you haven't checked out our episodes on our civilization smackdown we called it we talked about the aztecs the mayans and the egyptians i believe it was the mayans that basically created vulcanization. And didn't realize But of it. course, they didn't have a Mayan patent office, yep, so they couldn't they did not. go ahead and patent this ahead of time. So this was found, you know, years and years and centuries ago. Years and years and centuries <laughs> ago. But, you know, we hadn't actually figured it out And, until it, and it probably point. wasn't perfected, like, no, maintaining, of like not. maintaining the heat for a certain amount of time the way Goodyear did. Right. Interesting thing. So I saw this kind of graphic that demonstrated, like, what rubber's like before it's vulcanized and uh-huh. after it's vulcanized. So imagine you have a whole bunch of, like, spaghetti that's cooked, and it's all just laying together, and it's all just kind of, like, slippery, Like, sloppery. does it have, like, oil on it or butter or something? Or it Probably. Okay. And it's just, like, super, like, you... you Whatever you put it into, it just forms that shape, sure. right? And then imagine you take that same spaghetti, and mm. everywhere a noodle crosses another noodle, they connect. They, All yeah. of a sudden, there's this structure, but it still has that kind of... still a sp- little, like, you can manipulate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so basically, it's still really long strains of rubber molecules, but they're attached at different locations, mm-hmm. which gives it that structure, which makes it, you know... It's better for heat, better for cold, right. you know, better durability, all the things that go along with uh, vulcanization. Interesting. Look at yeah. you with your spaghetti. Eh, I try. So specifically, what what uh, our old friend uh, Chuck found out was, uh, in his experiments, he found that steam pressure applied for six hours. Six. Uh, roughly. And and that's about 207 degrees Fahrenheit. I just did the translation in my head. I didn't have it written on my screen here. Gave the most right. uniform result. And that's actually still kind of the benchmark. I'm sure they do higher and lower temperatures or higher and lower pressures uh, to get different types of rubber, you know, different strengths depending on. But they, they still do that. They, they hold it at pressure, at temperature to vulcanize. Yeah, that's interesting. So the vulcanization process is what put Naugatuck, Connecticut on the map. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't I don't know if it's still on the map, but at one point it was. But this was the leading site of rubber manufacturing during the 19th and 20th century. So that's kind of interesting. And a bunch of rubber companies operated out of this town under Goodyear's license. So including Uniroyal, which made the popular Keds sneakers. And I think Keds are still kind of like a... I don't know if it's like a trendy hipster thing. My daughter wears them. Yeah, see, trendy yeah, yeah. hipster thing. So you, you, you talked about, like, he did a lot of licensing, and apparently, you said it before, he was terrible at setting up deals. The worst. Uh, the one thing he was good at was fighting patent infringements. He was, but he was also good at going to jail. He was. So two things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, he had roughly, the number I found was he had 32 different infringement cases that he filed uh, at the U.S. Supreme Court. <laughs> See, uh, it's all those Mayans coming out saying oh, we invented this first. So essentially, like everybody kind of figured out what he was doing. 
And uh, he also really wasn't good at thinking globally. Okay. So uh, what happened was uh, he, he, he filed the patent in the U.S., yeah. And uh, all these infringement cases happen. Then he, he decides he wants to go global. But guess what? He didn't file his patent in uh, the UK. Well, so uh, so he, 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 he didn't file it in the UK. Is that how that works? You have to have it all over? I don't know if it's like that nowadays. Friends. I don't yeah. know if it's like that nowadays. But, okay. but back then, they, they didn't fight. Uh, or they, they, they didn't play hand in hand. So, okay. uh, so he sent some samples to some British rubber companies thinking that you know he would maybe partner up with them and license it to them. Uh, so this cat by the name of Thomas Hancock uh, was looking at one of the samples, noticed there was some sulfur like residue that was on it, puts two and two together, and it's like, he's doing something with sulfur, because he didn't, he didn't give him the details. Mm-hmm. So he figures it out, and he actually reinvented the vulcanization rubber in 1843, four years after Goodyear, and patented it in the UK. Boom. Boom. Before we get into that anymore, let's take a break for this week's Luke's Rant. So here's my rant, and this is directly related to Chuck Goodyear, Goodyear the company, tires, rubber, vulcanization, all you jerks out there. Oh, jerks. Why are tires so expensive? So expensive. Well, especially, yeah, go ahead. So I have, uh, as some of you may know, Toyota Tacoma. Some of some of our listeners. Four wheel drive. I love it. I put a little bit bigger, more aggressive tire on it. I haven't bought tires for this thing in like seven years, so I guess I can't complain because I, <laughs> I don't drive much. Uh, but I went to go get new tires, and I got a quote, and they were the ones I wanted were like the super gnarly ones. They wanted like two hundred and ninety five dollars a piece a tire, yeah. per tire. So I'm like over a thousand dollars for a set of tires. So I say, oh, let's pump the brakes. You know, I, that's I, what got you into this problem to begin with. Exactly. <laughs> so then, my wife's like, "Yeah, it snowed the other day, and the car wasn't like doing all that great, and it's an all-wheel drive, you know, Volkswagen." And I was like, oh, "Okay, let me take a look here." I wasn't even paying attention. Her tires are like it's bald, bald. Yeah. So now she needs four new tires because it's an all-wheel <laughs> drive vehicle. You got to buy all four at the same time. Yeah. So literally, in like a one-month period, I got to buy like two thousand dollars worth of tires. It's a good thing you have all that podcast money. And even cheap tires are expensive. Like, if you go with, like, the no-name tires, oh, it's, it's so I, – I don't know what the deal is. I'm going to just put recaps on it like I used to do back in the day. That, that seems like an idea. I think they're really unsafe. Yeah. But, you know. It's only your wife's life. I mean, I, I'd put recaps on my truck. Oh, okay. I wouldn't put them on her car. Well, I, that I'd was considerate of you. One, so. Yeah, they are super expensive. I got a flat in my truck. Maybe – I don't know, a couple of years ago now, okay. maybe a few. And that just meant all the tires had to oh, go. Of like, course. Oh my gosh. And they and I don't drive. Like I drive here and that's it. And so I think in what, six years I I have forty thousand miles on my truck. Something yeah. like that. And it's like the tires are still perfect, and I had yeah. to replace everything. Makes like, you mad. Oh, it was so I, I don't know what it is. So maybe we could get one of our Maybe one of our people listening knows someone at a tire dealership. And Hook they could, you up. They could cut me a deal Maybe on one of our tire people <sighs> would like to sponsor us Man. with free tires for life. <gasps> Great idea. I thought so. Okay. okay. Uh, back back at it with Chuck. Okay. So, so he was over in Europe, right? He's over in Europe. So hold, hold on. I, s- still on that Thomas Hancock story. Oh, so yeah. Hancock says, you know what? I'm going to give you half shares Yeah. in, in, in this. Sharesies, Let's do this. They of call course. It. To be nice. So Goodyear's like, you know what? No, I've prosecuted a whole bunch of you cats, and I'm gonna win. Well, <laughs> he loses, <laughs> um, and uh, and actually, it's Hancock that actually coined uh, the vulcanization process. Apparently, a friend of his uh, talked about the Roman god of fire, Vulcan, and that's where vulcanization came from. So it wasn't Goodyear that came up with the name vulcanization. It was actually uh, Thomas. And Hancock. it has nothing to do with Star Trek. It does well. I, I, I'm not sure if Spock trip. was involved uh-huh. or anything like that, but. He was a smart guy, though, so I think Spock probably yeah. has it figured out as yeah. well. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting that it kind of got uh, taken away from him. Goodyear actually attended the trial with Hancock mm-hmm. there and everything. Um, yeah, so that was kind of interesting. But a bunch of other chemists like testified about the studies, yeah. and obviously like something about like the timeline, then clearly... Hancock hadn't stolen this and was the first one that came up with yep. it or something like that. But somehow in history, Goodyear's still the man. 
Because who's heard of Charles Hancock? Thomas Nobody. Hancock. Nobody. Nobody's heard of Charles or <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> His brother Thomas. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if you have anything else, but I saw that poor old Charles Goodyear died at the age of 59. Oi. Well, so they think a lot. I think a lot of it yeah. had to do with his huffing problem. Well, they said that he would like he would use no like protection on all this. He would just be breathing all of these crazy chemicals in. That's terrible. Yeah, it can't be good for you, I imagine. Yeah, so he died in 1860. Fun fact: he died on the eve of the Civil War. And you know how I love my war connections oh, to do. these things. He was two hundred thousand dollars in debt when oh. he died. Do you know how much money that must be in today dollars? That's a lot. Of a money. lot of That's money. That's a lot of money in today dollars. Yeah, he should have. He should have made more uh the goodyear tire and rubber company interesting fact about this was founded in akron ohio in 1898 and you think whoa that's 38 years after chuck died so clearly it must have been like one of his surviving children right nope Nope. it was named in honor of goodyear uh by some other dude completely unrelated but just that appreciated all of the efforts that he did for the vulcanization process, making rubber, and all of that. And then also the Goodyear blimp, nothing to do with him, just associated with the company and like an honor to You know him. what they call that? They call that an homage. Is that what they call that? I think. The company was, I, I could be totally wrong. I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe I just said a French swear word. I, I like know. it. <laughs> I like that. A um, well, couple other things. Chuck wrote a book on the topic of making rubber, and this thing sounds amazing. I'm sure. Gum elastic and its varieties. Oh, my goodness. With a detailed account of its applications and uses and of the discovery of vulcanization. If you have... That's, that's that definitely an easy read, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So then Charles Slack wrote a, a good book about Goodyear, because it's Goodyear, uh, called, this is another good one, Noble Obsession, Charles Goodyear, Thomas Hancock, and the Race to Unlock the Greatest Industrial Secret of the 19th Century. So if you literally have nothing else to do, nothing. maybe pick that if up. If you've read every other book in the library. <laughs> Every stinking day. So a couple fun facts. Today, oh, yes. there is a cultivated rubber tree for every two human beings on Earth. And what meant by Excuse cultivated, me? like not like not naturally, it just kind of, you know, grew by itself. We use that much nature. rubber. Yeah, so, for, so for every, uh, there, there are three million tree milker harvesting corporations. Excuse me? Well, they tree mil- milker. Yeah, they milk the trees okay. to get the, uh, the 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 rubber out. The United States imports <laughs> uh, almost half of this. Uh, a lot of it nowadays is actually synthesized uh, from petroleum. Yeah, and nearly three hundred thousand Americans earn their livelihood directly related to rubber manufacturing. That is a lot. Thanks, rubber. We owe a lot to you. Yeah, especially expensive tires. Uh, do you have more fun facts? Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I have one other thing I wanted to throw out there. Go ahead. So early on when I started this saying that we're continuing our Great Inventors series, and you said, hey, is he a great inventor? Here's what I have to back that up. He was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame in 1976. So Luke and all of our Facebook and Twitter trolls that are going to tell us he wasn't that great, that's your proof. He's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. It's like Eli Manning. He's going to be there, too, even if he wasn't that great. He was good for two games. Oh, you're terrible. Sorry, Giants fans. Anything else from you, Luke? No, I got nothing. Awesome. So with that, we're going to wrap up our shortest episode eh, in history. Maybe not. I'm pretty sure. Okay. But hopefully you guys learned something about Charles Goodyear, what a bad manager he was of money. Poor family man, in my opinion. Good at accidentally discovering good stuff. Good at accidentally and inventing things. Until next time. See ya.